Hey guys, welcome back to my studio. It's Dwight. How you doing today? We're going to do another pour and I'm also going to do a demonstration today. I'm going to show you exactly how I mix my paints. Now I know I've done this before, but I've gotten a few questions and um, I'm like, okay, well, I will show you exactly how I do that and um, show you the consistency. So I'll be working with a 24 by 30 canvas today. So that takes about, I think, 25 ounces of paint. Um, however, since it's going to have the thicker edges, it's a Michaels level three canvas then we're going to need three or four or five more ounces. So I'm going to go for about 30, 35 ounces. That way I'll have enough when I tip off the edges and the corners and make sure that it covers the whole canvas. Um, also, I have my handy dandy chart here. Uh, I know this one's water stained, but if you'd like a copy, um, it helps to figure out how much you need to cover your canvas. Feel free to send me an email at dwightpours at yahoo.com and I'll be more than happy to send this to you. It's my guide. I use it. I found it online, gosh, a couple years ago. And every time I'm using a different canvas, a different size, that's what I use. So the other question I have is um, people are struggling with trying to get this to work. Sometimes they'll send me a picture, nothing happens. Um, sometimes they'll send me a picture and then the cells are all wonky or stretched out. I think I've said before, um, you have to play with the consistency. Um, that's the most important part of this. So if it's too thin, hmm, gonna get wonky or stretched out cells. Um, if it's too thick, you might not get much at all, if any. Sometimes what happens is you have too much paint on the canvas and so where the weight of the paint is, it puddles and so it pulls all of the color into that. Um, the other thing too is if you don't have enough paint on, then everything gets really stretched out and you lose any composition and or any cells. So give me a couple seconds here, I'm going to um, prep and I'm going to do a demonstration on exactly how I mix my paints. I'm going to pick a color, so bear with me. I'll mix and I'm going to stir and add water and stir to show you the consistency and that will be used on all the different colors I'm going to be using today. Okay guys, hold on just a second. Okay guys, I'm back. So this cup here is with my Floetrol and I just fill up a cup. It's that way I have some strained and ready to use. So this cup here, I'm gonna put my paint in here in just a second. It's an eight ounce cup. Um, and I'm gonna make, you know, about six to seven ounces of paint. So I'm gonna be using um, Folk Art Teal Topaz. That's it right there. So what I do, I shake it up and I literally just pour it all into the bottle, into the cup. pretty thick, if you can see it going in. Okay. Sometimes a trick that I've learned is to add a little bit of Floetrol into the bottle. And that'll give me two ounces of Floetrol actually. and then shake it up and you get all the excess paint that's on the inside out. So what you can't see is I'm shaking vigorously off to the side here. Okay, so let's get the rest of that in there. So usually in my instructions, I say two to three parts flow trough. Um, that was one part. I usually just eyeball it. So what I'm gonna do is just pour it in Now, if you can see the reaction, that means this is probably going to sell well. So I stir it up. Okay. And then I add a little bit of Liquitex pouring medium. I say a drizzle and literally, if you can see, it's just a drizzle. That's all. Remember, Floetrol is a um, paint conditioner. You can use Floetrol and it will let you use more paint, if that makes sense. Um, Liquitex pouring medium, that's a binder. That helps the pigments bind, so when you add water and stretch, it doesn't um, lose its pigments and it doesn't fragment. So here's my cup of water, just regular old tap water.
Now remember, if you make it too thin, what do you do? You can add more Floetrol or more paint. If it's too thick, you just gotta keep adding water. So I mix and mix. Now that's still just a little thicker than I like it. So I'm gonna add a little more water. And I'm gonna keep mixing. So this should be, you know, a consistency where it doesn't mound, nor does it sink. So I just raise my stir stick slightly above, maybe about an inch or so above, and that's how I judge how thick it is and how thick it needs to be. Okay, one last time. It's a little thick, a little more water. Running out of space in the cup here. This should do it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm mixing these in eight ounce cups, but I'm gonna use four four ounce cups. So I'm just gonna pour these into four ounce cups so I have enough and I have left over if I need to. And that'll give me 16 ounces. And then I'm gonna do, do an eight ounce cup of white paint. And the white paint is gonna go between the layers. Okay. Perfect. Can you see that? It's going right in. Okay, I hope that made, oops, I hope that made some sense. Did I spill? Um, and I'm gonna mix the rest of my paints and we'll get this pour started. Okay guys, take care. Okay guys, I'm back. Here is my color palette for today. Um, these colors are folk art except for the purple, which is Amethyst by DecoArt's Dazzling Metallics. This color I have not used in a long time. It's folk art champagne. I love this color. This blue is um, folk art teal. The white is going to be Deco, I'm not sorry. Well, actually, yeah, Deco Arts Dazzling Metallics is a little bit of pearl white with Artist's Loft Soft Body White. And then this green is Folk Art um, Malachite. Yeah, nice. There's my dump paint, same old paint. Artist Loft Soft Body Black. Remember, everything was mixed with a drizzle of Liquitex Pouring Medium and uh, water, and then Floetrol. One part paint, two to three parts Floetrol, drizzle, and then water to thin. Okay, so I'm gonna set my canvas up, get it prepped, and we'll get started.
Okay, guys, I am back. Here we are with the final wet results. I'm going to let this sit for a long time. Had some errands to do. Had to clean my house. So here we are. Now, yesterday's dried really nicely. Um, the colors really came through. So I'm anticipating the same with this one, with the purples and the greens and a little bit of the blue through here. So let me move in, show you some of the details. kind of interesting. This section's interesting too. I'm not quite sure how I think about it right now. Got some areas in here that need to be cleaned up, as you can see. Um, I think the white really kind of did some funky stuff there, so we'll see um, what I need to do when this is all dry. But the edges are starting to dry, as you can tell, so it's pretty much set move over here just some more of the color the green i've never really used green and purple together before um i think it's interesting it's not my favorite color combination but i think it, it works okay um, there's enough interest in here that i think once it's all dry i think it'll be pretty cool yeah so guys i hope what i was saying earlier makes some sense about mixing and about um, you know, how much to put on a canvas and how much flow trawl, how much water, etc., etc. Um, any questions, anytime, feel free to send me an email at um, DwightPores at Yahoo.com. And yeah, we'll see how this dries and we shall see you soon.